Ah, 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 welcome to Skill Capped. Today, we're putting the brain of a pro player inside the body of a diamond player. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, not really. But this video is meant to be a follow-up to Casey's Road to Diamond series, where he climbs a diamond without the use of any comms whatsoever. In this, I'm going to coach one of our editors, Strike, who is Diamond 3, and be in his ear telling him exactly what to say. In lower elos, teammates never communicate. We get it. We knew this was going to be an uphill battle. You could come up with the most big brain strat in the world, but if your teammates never want to listen, then, well, how do you win? But in this video, we can show you how you can deal with teammates who just don't listen to comms, even when they're coming from a smurf. So how do we do it? Well, I can't sit here and show you every game I coached him for, otherwise we'd be here forever. But if you want to see every round, every comm, and what pro comms sound like, you should subscribe to our website at Skillcapped. We have world-class courses produced by radiant level players covering anything from agent specifics to map metas to basic fundamentals. If you combine those with countless hours of our VOD reviews and coaching sessions, I find it hard that we won't help you rank up. So quit wasting your RR and come check us out at Skillcapped. We'll be waiting. But getting Strike's teammates to calm was presumably impossible. Just listen. Split, let's split Lee. Say, me and Breach go arcade. You three go B main. All right. Uh, how about this? Let's let's go let's go B. Let's split B. Uh, Breach, can you come with me onto right arcade, here. and then everyone else can go to go to tree. Right here. Yeah. All right. Ask ask Breach to flash his first angle when you walk up, like when you get up. Breach, would you be able to would you be able to right flash uh, flash yeah. the first angle? Nice, nice. Oh, I'm stunned. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. You can flash. No, like. Way back in the corner. I'm gonna push up. I'm pushing up. Say one tower. Tower. One tower. One tower. Launching smoke. Oh wait. Am, am I hearing this right? His teammates actually listened. I mean, this is only one round. I mean, surely his teammates don't listen for the rest of the rounds, right? Watch behind you. Careful. Now we're Jackass. <laughs> nice. I got chat on me. Chat is on me. On. on... Yeah, yeah. Hold this with me. Hold it with me. Hold it with me. So this would be all of me. One enemy remaining. Nice. Let's go arcade though again. You guys need to make sure that you pinch the site yeah. or pinch the. Reach. You wanna up. you wanna come in with me and arcade? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Let, let's wait. Let's wait for them to, to swing out. Oh, that was a bad smoke. The bad smoke. Careful. Oh. Whoa. Rocky sniper. In the corner. Nice, nice, nice. Where's the up? I got it. I got it. I got it. Chill, 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 chill. Get rid of the nade. Get rid of the nade as soon as they as they stun it. Smoke. Get out of my way. Oh nice. shit! Uh, we have all this control right now. Okay, well, this was only one game. Strike probably got really lucky. But was it actually all luck? Not really. What people don't understand is that there's a method to how you communicate. I know Strike personally, and when he comes, he sounds like a nice, clean, and wholesome guy. He doesn't have that stupid Valorant accent that people can't stand. You guys want to just, you guys just want to run, right here. run towards me, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no, yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh wait, now I'm full. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> Alright, now nah, forget it. Okay, can you flash breach? Can you flash? He isn't toxic, he never sounds down and out, but upbeat instead. He sounds like he's just excited to play Valorant and is overall a nice guy. So when you're coming to your teammates, it's important that you sound confident, you aren't talking down to people, and that you're bringing up the morale of the team rather than dragging it down. Even science backs us up. With a simple Google search, you can find articles that prove that positive thinking and attitudes do affect how you perform in-game. An excerpt from psychologyiresearchnet.com says, Studies involving athletes being trained in the use of positive thinking have revealed that athletes experience reduced pre-competition anxiety and elevated levels of confidence, as well as more facilitative interpretations of the symptoms associated with anxiety. Now, I'm not saying that being positive is going to guarantee comms from your teammates, but it helps and is a good habit to build. Also, another thing to note about strikes communication is that nothing I'm telling you to say is that complicated. You might think that comms at a higher level or something super crazy like, we need to go A, bait up the raised paint shells, double back B, go through sewer, and when the clock strikes midnight, we split and fake B, then go A. No, that's not it at all. Most of my comms throughout these games to strike are super simple. In ranked, you never know what you're going to get. Keeping things as simple as possible makes life easier for your teammates. Listen to a couple of comms I said to strike in the pre-round. Attacking. So you just wait a little bit, right? Oh guys, let's go mm -hmm. A. Uh, let's split right. through sand. We're gonna split. Hey. Well, what's your plan? What's your plan? <laughs> split A through dish. Through dish. Say so Ray's coming right. with me. Let's split A through di uh, dish. Uh, Ray, you wanna come with me? 
I'm thinking. Reach, you wanna you wanna stun this right and then raise you wanna come in right with here. me through sand? Yep. Perfect. Nice. And the best part about these is that his teammates listened. After all, Valorant is a reactionary game in that you have to respond quickly and accordingly to how your opponents are playing. This is why keeping calm simple is important. Most of the time, a lot of people overthink what they're going to do in a round. This leads to people not being on the same page, miscommunication, and then you guys start losing the round. Asking things for like a flash here or there is more than enough to get everybody on the same page. And when communicating to your teammates, you want to make sure you're not overcomplicating what you're saying. You want to get out what you're saying as fast as possible while still making sense. Even the way pro teams communicate is quick, calm, and concise. They don't use unnecessary language, they don't clutter comms, and aren't panicked. Take a listen to Team Liquid's CSGO team and what they sound like mid-game. Nice. Okay, for boost. Not boost, not boost, not boost. Be clear, I think. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, Maybe kiting yeah. emo. Wait, what? Check emo. Fine, fine, fine. You're good. Maybe banana though. Yeah. No, no, no spawn right I'm gonna coffin. I'm gonna yeah, coffin. Nice, nice, nice. 2v2. Only banana? I'm Your coffin. banana's good, Keith. No, yeah. no op unless they picked it up. Smile me back up. One spawn. This one. Close Same, come through spawn. Both, I think. Coming to help you. So as long as you sound calm and confident, your team should always be on the same page and have a decent chance at winning every round. Okay, so we honestly thought that the first game was a fluke. Everyone was working together, was happy, and Strike was the leader of the pack. We decided to play another in hopes that we'd get teammates that, you know, didn't listen. I mean, after all, it was just one game, right? Wrong. Strike, with his uplifting personality, was able to get everyone to work together and get another win. But as I'm writing the script, I realize something interesting. If you watch Casey's Astro Road to Diamond series, you'll see that he's almost never with his teammates. He's actually not saying a word to them, no one's telling him anything, and he's lurking constantly. But with Strike's gameplay, that's almost the exact opposite. He's calming, working with his teammates, entering, and he's with his team all the time. Strike is doing this because his teammates are willingly working with him. Casey did what he did because his teammates weren't working with him. And then do you remember how I said Valorant is a reactionary game? Well, we're going to see all of this come into fruition here. Both Casey and Strike are adapting and reacting to what's being thrown at them. I mean, like, for example, at the start of this Fracture game, we thought we were going to remake, but who knows what his teammate was doing. They came back last second, and Strike adapted quickly and on time. Let's split A. I'll let's lurk go. sand. Let's split A. Let's, let's split A. I'll go sand. Perfect. Reina, sand. You try and smoke for your team before you take rope. Smoke's down. I smoke CT. I don't have. I don't have rope. You should. The flank. Yeah. Nice. Launching smoke. Oh my remains. God! Strike. And then in Casey's Road to Diamond series, he never had comms, and listen to how he adapted to his teammates. So I'm gonna use the smoke in mid. Concealment. Start the round. Create some pressure. I'm just hanging out. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm just gonna hang here and then wait for our team to kind of scale up. Out of the charges. I'm just kind of holding this space, you know, because we have a really good position right now. We have four live, four v two, um, so they can come out on site if they want. Uh, and basically, we have main and we have connector right here, so there's not a lot that they can do. One enemy remaining. Last guy's gonna be in this corner. Probably not do that during a round, but. We'll touch back on this adaptation concept later, but it's important to realize that if you tried calming and no one's responding, oh well, it is what it is. Try and use what your teammates are giving you and play off of that. So in this second game, Strike decided to play Cypher. You can get a bit more creative with Cypher than you can in Brimstone, and I wanted to do something fun and set the tone for the game. But what I said was a bit more confusing than it turned out to be. Take a listen. Okay, so the camera like around here, put right? It put it like behind you, like uh, directly behind you, to your left. Yeah. To your left. Like, so you see, you see the painting you... of the three people? I got behind you. To your left, to your left, to your left. To your left, to your left. The, the uh, three people on the wall. Three people on the wall. To your right. Three people. To your right. Like, oh, right, here. Right, okay, right, okay, right, okay, yes. okay. 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 Right. behind so the box. You, okay. Flash off right cam. Oh. Can you, um, can you put yourself, yeah. can you put yourself here and then, um, flash off my camera, basically. Just hold out your flash and be ready. Now I've told you guys time and time again that trap plays are a ton of fun and work really well when run right. But what I did here was make it too confusing. What I wanted from them was to put the camera on the wall like this. Then Phoenix to put himself behind this box like this. And when someone comes in, he throws his flash and gets a ton of free kills. I've actually could have made this a ton simpler and said, Strike, put a trap wire down that Phoenix can flash off of. One, this doesn't make Strike have to babysit his camera anymore. And two, my point gets across a lot simpler. Uh, like I said before, you want to keep your comms stupid simple. Now the next round they run to play, but Phoenix gets cold feet. 
Take a look. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Damn, it's okay. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, just. <laughs> okay. 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 When you when you see someone on the map, just flash them, and then I'll swing off of it. Wait, no one's at B. Wait, no one's at B. I got one. Camera taken out. What? Is, okay. Why didn't Phoenix flash? I'll be honest, I don't know. And as a matter of fact, that Reyna that he didn't kill goes on to get a four piece this round and is the reason Strike loses this round. So make this be a lesson that when your teammate wants to do something with you, try your best, trust them and follow through. Now I'm going to touch back to the point I was making earlier. It's really important that you constantly play with a high level of communication, or at least try to. Strike calmed a ton throughout all these games. And if they didn't listen to him, oh well, it didn't really affect his gameplay. He still did his own thing. That's all right. I, I, can, I, can, I can try to put a trip for you if you want. Why don't you, um... Oh, this is a nice spot. The big takeaway from this video is that you players should be practicing doing this because it clearly exhibited a large amount of value to strike in these games and it helps him become a better player. If they didn't listen to him, it's kind of just like, you know, oh well, maybe next game sort of vibe. And it's not like he lost anything from trying to be a good teammate. He improved because of it. And speaking of improving, Strike hit Ascendant 1 after playing these games, and they were all relatively easy wins. I've personally worked with Strike for the past year. When I met him, he was silver and gold. And throughout this past year, I've watched him improve drastically, to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if he hit Immortal soon. And throughout these games, Strike had a lot of sick plays on his own, and I didn't have to tell him a thing. He's nuts. Take a look. Fear Reyna. Open up the sky. I altered them. Oh, they're out. I know exactly where you are. Well played. Well played, Strike. Yeah, let's Boy. go. Wow, my nice strike. Oh my, oh my goodness gracious. My planet. Oh my goodness, right? It's nice. One enemy remaining. Oh my god, strike. Okay. <laughs> For a protein shake. Strike has improved a lot throughout the year. He even left a testimonial on our Discord. While, yeah, I might be biased, our dedication to helping people improve is unrivaled. So no matter if your team comms, no comms, it doesn't matter. We can help you rank up out of any situation. Now, if there's anything that you take away from this video, it's that you should try your best to keep good comms. If no one responds to you, well, there isn't much you can do. Just try your best to work with what you have. If you're constantly calming, it'll become a good habit. And then when you play with good players, you'll be able to work together effectively and win more rounds. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And remember, if you want to carry your no calming teammates, we can help you do that. We have content on our website, like our Radiant Smurf commentaries, where Radiance will play in every rank and show you the secrets to winning with these no commers. Or you can be privately coached by some of our Radiant level players. Now with courses, coaching, smurf commentaries, ask yourself, are we really not worth it? Now quit wasting RR and come check us out at Skullcapped, who will be waiting. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Teets, and we here at Skullcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.